picture was taken last year in a Buddhist monastery in Gangtae, Bhutan. These are some of the happiest people I've met in my life. The young monks, primarily orphans, as young as two years old, devote their lives to religious practice and live in incredibly modest conditions that most of us would classify as poverty. Yet everyone was smiling, everyone was welcoming, everyone was happy. So you can imagine this seemed to me a paradox. From the moment this picture was taken, I realized that the happiest people I'd encountered weren't necessarily in any of the jet set capitals, like London or Monaco, or in financially advanced cities such as Stockholm and Oslo, where I spent part of my childhood, or even here in Rosé. They were in Bhutan. So why isn't the Western world, with its abundance of wealth and resources, capable of producing an equally happy and satisfied population? Why are its happiness rates falling continually? Let's consider this diagram for a moment. As children, most of us are taught the generic equation that hard work combined with success leads to happiness, that happiness is the result of success. But I think this is completely wrong. Bhutan is the only nation in the world that chooses to measure its progress using GNH, gross national happiness, in which non-economic aspects such as good governance, psychological welfare, and community vitality are taken into account. Nearly every other nation uses GDP as a measure of progress that solely focuses upon profit and material well-being. Yet they completely disregard happiness as the most relevant factor of development. So maybe we need to flip this. Maybe we should be teaching children that success, as a matter of fact, is the result of happiness and not the other way around. Essentially, nearly everything we've been taught about happiness since early age is misguided. We must start with happiness from the beginning. After all, happiness is the most natural state of mind. And yes, it's about time we accept its relevance and importance in this golden age of technology yet it's so easy to forget it. Now, as Einstein would have said, there are only two ways to live, as if everything is a miracle, or as if nothing is a miracle. Much the same way we wake up with a similar choice every morning. We can either live our entire lives in misery, or we can live them in joy. The Bhutanese monks didn't wait for miracles or better lives to be happy. Instead, they just started with happiness all along. This is what kept their community together, and this is what we need to aim for. Thank you.